they showed me this photo that was the idea, the prototype for the makeup. I um, immediately was like, well, if you want to be like Led Zeppelin, what do we need makeup for? Why can't we just be a great band? I didn't realize that this was the, the thing that they were hanging their hopes on, that this gimmick in conjunction with this kind of music was going to carry them to stardom, and it did. I'm a huge Kiss fan too, and I, I tell you, my wife and I, we, we, we definitely, you know, we drive around in our Ford Exploder, and sometimes people look at us because you know the windows are down, you know, ah, wanna rock it? And they're like, but no, I mean, I'm a huge Kiss fan, and you know, gosh, the, like you say, the Beatles and Kiss, wow, you know, two of the hugest bands of all time. On the road and seeing Kiss, you know, and sitting back behind the stage and uh, being a drummer, you know, drummers hang or hang out and have more camaraderie than any any other instrumentalist, I think. Drummers have drum clinics and drum festivals. Let's read Modern Drummer and talk about drums. What kind of sticks do you use? And I remember hanging big time with Eric Carr and becoming pretty good friends with them. Well, I'm from Detroit. I saw them play in Detroit. It was just amazing, the, the mystique. Man, these guys are so awesome, you know, on the road. And Andy Jones was producing, and my brother Matt was playing bass, and Joe and I were all on the road. And Paul walked by and I said, man, what are you doing here? He said, well, we're recording in the next room. Come on over, I'll play you a track. Wow, awesome. And I'd kind of gotten to know just about everybody in KISS and, you know, meet them and, you know, become friends and stuff. And so he was like, yeah, come on over to the next room. And I remember he put the CD in, or no, he played the two-inch tape. And I remember hearing it out of those huge speakers. And it yeah. was like louder than just about I'd ever listened to those big, mm -hmm. I thought they were going to burst. They were yeah. so loud. But he just went, check it out, Wah! and turned the knob. And it was like, wow. And we were just like grooving along with the, I'll never forget, because I had goosebumps. I was like, man, Paul Stanley's playing me a tune that nobody's heard yet. This is the Texas Jam. Mm -hmm. And uh, Paul was, uh, this is after the first album, we're doing the I Won't Forget You video. And uh, he w really wanted to produce the album, you know. So we were like, oh, great, you know, you know. So he goes, I'm going to come out. I'm going to come out to Texas Jam and come see his play. So within two minutes, you know, I'm like, you think we can get him to come up with us and play with us? And I'm like, you know, sure, sure you know, maybe, maybe. So we asked Paul to come up and play, right? He comes up and plays and it's great. Then afterwards, I'm backstage with him and I'm saying, let's jam some of the old Kiss songs. Now this is like 87 uh -huh. and he, they were in the outs, like I think right about that time they weren't playing. And he's like, dude, I, because really I don't, I don't really remember any of the old Kiss songs. I mean, and, and I'm sitting here playing and he's like, and he's like, oh yeah, yeah, I remember that one. And I'm like, Paul, you know, you know, and, and you know, now, you know, now obviously he, he knows him, but I was like, I was amazed that he was just like. Well, at, by that time, the catalog at, must have been out of songs. So out of sight, out of mind. He was yeah. like, well, no, listen, if, when, I, when I need a reason, to learn all them songs, I'll learn all them songs. But right now, I want to produce this fucking band, you know? So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, so that's just where I'm focusing on. I had just moved out here from, from the East Coast, and um, um, I was playing at Gazzari's on the Strip, and this girl came and said that Kiss was looking for a guitar player and thought I might be good, and I thought she was full of it, you know? She was just whatever. But she brought Eric Carr down to the, to the next time I played, and he was, he was into it. And um, he called me and said, why don't you come down to the record plant and meet the guys? And I was like, oh my. I mean, I, I, to be honest, I wasn't a KISS fan, but I was like, I knew they were great and everything, but I'd, I was a little older maybe or something. But So I went down and met him, and uh, no one had seen him without their makeup yet. And I was really nervous, and Eric took me next door to this bar that used to be at the old record plant, which I'm sure you know. Oh, yeah. And uh, we did some tequila shooters, my first time ever, tequila, and um, mellowed out a bit. Went in there and played some leads on the Creatures of the Night stuff just to audition. But I'll never forget this. This was great, man. Good. Um, so I was playing solos on the, on the thing, and, I, and Gene just looks at me and goes, you know, do you ever play uh, Major? And I'm like, I'm looking at my guitar going, Major? What the hell is Major? And he goes, you know, do, 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 do. And I go, yeah, I know that one, you know, that's major? Oh, cool, thanks, Gene, you know? <laughs> so anyway, to, to finish the story off, I went and played with him a few times, auditioned, at, we rehearsed, which was a really a rush for a 17-year-old kid. And uh, 
and I, they called me back to come back again and play and I went in the bathroom and I was kind of freaking out at this point like I'm just not ready for this type of thing but I go in the bathroom and, and Gene walks in and he's you know really tall and and uh, I was taking a leak and Gene pulls up to the next stall and starts taking a leak and and uh, I just you. I ended up you know getting a get a, getting a little uh, a little piss stain on my pants and so I went I went I was really nervous about it because I thought oh man that's not cool although now I'd be like check it out Gene look I got this <laughs> piss stain on my pants but I went in and uh, put my guitar on real quick and he kept kind of we were playing he kept kind of looking at me like what <laughs> he was like why do you because I kept turning away from him and he looked because you could see it you know <laughs> so he, eventually he just goes everyone stop Doug play a guitar solo and they all came out in front and stood right in front of me and I played this guitar <laughs> this guitar solo. Paul Stanley is the greatest rock and roll front man. He is a great front man. Of all time. Absolutely. Paul Stanley was always my uh, kind of archetype for rock and roll stardom because he's got a hairy chest. Hairy I was, chest, I was yeah, a hairy yeah. dude. Yeah, that's right, <laughs> so I was that. like, you know, it's that's okay that. to be a beast. <laughs> Seeing Kiss in the show, I said, oh my God, this is like unbelievable. It inspired me to want to do something theatrical more than I usually did. So uh, I set my cymbals on fire during my drum solo. Not knowing, I just used lighter fluid. And when I hit it, the lighter fluid went everywhere and went on the front of the stage and set the, all the paper that was in front of the stage on fire. So I had to get the uh, fire extinguishers out and put it out. And I never did that again. But, no, that was but I was inspired by the Kiss show because, you know, I. I I mean, none of us ever seen a show like that, no. you know. It was, a, it was you know, Alice Cooper was a great show, you know, in the early '70s, and but I mean, Kiss took it to the extreme, you know. Definitely, it was pretty amazing. And the makeup and the whole bit, you know. Awesome. When I met Peter, he goes, yeah, I'm from Brooklyn too, you know. And we, you know, actually, we all got along because we're all from New York. And exactly. It was cool, and they weren't really, you know, they was they weren't really go out or anything at that point, no. you know. Not at all. They were pretty normal Brooklyn dudes that like on their first. Uh, you know, big tour, you know? Exactly. I mean, they were, they were magic. It was like the audience was going absolutely berserk, coming to the gigs and kiss makeup, you know? And um, and then I got to be real close friends with them, so I was uh, managed myself by, with a coin management. Uh -huh. Alan Miller, who was a coins partner on the West Coast, was uh, ended up being my manager for like 15 years, till he died of AIDS, you know? And because of that relationship of knowing kiss from the old days and uh, different times when I toured with King Cobra, Gene and Paul were like, cool to me they uh, you know I said look we need a tour man and we need to go out and tour with you guys and they gave us some, some decent money to go out with them you know and they did us a favor you know and uh, you know I played on Paul's album I, I hung out with Paul and uh, I remember going to Rod Stewart's party and the Rolls Royce with Paul Rolls Royce limo Paul picked me up at my house we went there just to bust Rod's balls I went with the Kiss guys instead of going with the Rod Stewart band you know Paul's a good dude man He's, uh, I really like Paul you know little by little I lost you know, everybody changed the numbers so many times, yeah. it just like, lost their numbers, you know. But, uh, you know, when they played here on the reunion tour, I went out and seen them. Seen, uh, Peter, I used to hang out with Peter when he was out of the band. I went to Mexico with Peter and his wife and my, my wife, and we hung out for a week in Mexico. And, you know, I was getting Peter, trying to get Peter to play a little more instead of just staying in his little room he had and practice. And, and we had uh, good times, you know. I came in and I remember sitting down. And I, okay. I, I do recall having a great time. The guys are really sweet, actually, man. It was a uh, uh, made me feel really at ease because you know I knew Gene was the bass player, that it, and Gene can play bass, you know. Exactly. And so I was just kind of well, maybe they just uh, maybe it's the producer who wants to bring in somebody else, or or maybe they were just know. looking for a different slant on Whatever. how to play that song from somebody I, who's got lots of chops like yourself. Could well be, but I know Gene was sitting on one side of me and Paul on the other side. So do you recall if they made comments like "We like that, we don't like"? Yeah, this. well, of course like they would. The they they, notes they, or they produced it was. me. Yeah. They produced me all the way through it, and. You know, if the, we latched onto something they liked, we kept with it. If not, they would make comments as any as one would, you right, know, right, right. for one's own record. You know, right. did you ever see them perform live in any of the uh, incarnations? Uh, no, I can't say that I have, man. I, uh, but uh, I've seen tapes of the show. I mean, there's, they're, they're uh, what can you say about Kiss? I mean, there's a page missing out of the rock book without them.